Hi everybody, today I'm going to be reviewing this standard size Alyssum underbust corset made by Retrofoli based in Montreal, Canada. So here is the front, the side, the back, and the other side. For the standard size measurements of this corset, starting with the length, the center front is 11 inches high. The shortest part of the corset along the princess seam from underbust to about the hip area is nine and a half inches. And in the center back, it is 12 and a half inches high. So you can see that uh, this corset actually starts low in the center front here to control the, the lower tummy. It actually cuts up so that it's just hitting the iliac crest right there. And then in the back, uh, it's quite high and it actually stops at about tailbone length here um, whereas in the top line it actually starts quite low underneath the breast and then comes up to a, a sweeping high back so that's why the length actually isn't that much different it's only about an inch and a half taller in the back than it is in the front but it looks so so much higher in the back because of the way that this whole corset sweeps upward so like i said before this corset uh it stops at about the iliac crest so on me it's not a long line corset and i rather like the control of any sort of muffin top in the back here uh, because of how high this corset comes um the way that it kind of curves upwards along the the spine area it actually still allows me to pretty much rest my shoulders down. For the circumferential measurements, this is a size 22 corset, and on the Etsy store, uh, this is advertised as having a 30 inch underbust, 22 waist, and about 32 iliac crest here. Um, when I got it in the mail initially, before I even seasoned it, it did measure a little bit smaller than that in the underbust and waist area. However, since I've been seasoning this, it has eased a little bit. So you can see that um, my underbust naturally is about 30 inches, so I have it almost closed here. Um, my iliac crest, though, is about 34 inches right now, and so I gave myself a little bit of a gap in the back there just to accommodate my hips so I don't get any numbness or anything. So here's the corset laid flat, and for the materials of this, there are three main layers in this corset, not including the interfacing or anything. So uh, for the fashion fabric of this one, I chose Le Scarpalette, or The Swing. This was painted by Jean Honoré Fragonard, I believe. And um, if I actually show you a close-up of this, a lot of people were speculating whether this corset had just been screen printed with the painting after it was already assembled, but it's actually not. Um, the fabric actually comes like this painting in one piece, and then each piece is very meticulously pattern matched. So uh, for instance, a couple of places, because of the way that the corset curves, it can't match up perfectly, perfectly even. So for instance, there's a tiny bit of the dress right there that just doesn't match up by a couple of millimeters, but that is uh, a property of, you know, putting a flat painting on a curve. So I have absolutely no problem with that. And the way that it was matched up in the front in any case, um, very, very well done. Same with the other side here. So you can see that it was actually mirror matched. So if you don't care for a corset that has a painting on it that's, you know, meticulously print matched, you just want something like a plain black twill, then that starts at $200 in Julianne's Etsy store. However, um, if you do want something like this, the prices tend to start at around or $230 or $235. So uh, that extra, say like $35 markup for the fabric and the print matching is really phenomenal. I think she's underpricing herself actually. And say you wanted a very long or wide painting that was asymmetric on both sides, so it would span the entire painting. Julianne says that she is very happy to accommodate almost any painting that can be print matched. Um, and she does not charge a markup for custom paints. Uh, it's just the flat markup for uh, having any painting on your corset at all. So that is really phenomenal. So anyways, moving along, the painting was printed onto cotton sateen and this uh, fashion fabric was interfaced twice, Julianne says. There is an interlining of 100% cotton and then the lining here is a floating liner and this is also 100% cotton. And here is what the retrofoli tag looks like. The pattern of this corset seems to be a six panel pattern unless you count that back one as a separate panel. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, and if you count that one, it might be seven. Um, for the actual construction, it seems that the uh, fashion fabric, once again, it was interfaced, and then it was flatlined with the, the strength fabric. Each seam is top stitched here, and Julianne told me that she quadruple stitches her seams. So the uh, panels were assembled and 
stitch twice and then the top stitch is also stitched twice. I requested a double boning upgrade in this corset so you might be able to see this is a seam between two panels and the double bones are both situated on one side of the panel as opposed to um, two bones being uh, laid on either side of the seam here. And then of course like I said before the lining on the inside is a floating liner. If I hold this corset taut, you might be able to see the outline of the waist tape. I can see the bottom of the waist tape right there, and um, it goes across to about there. And actually, if I show you on the other side, it might be a little bit more visible because I can feel a little bit of a bump, say right there is the bottom of the, the waist tape right there. So uh, it seems to be attached from the second panel here between the the seam of the first and the second panel and goes across to about there, that sixth panel. Here's a close-up of the binding and it's made with commercial black uh, double folded bias tape here. It's machine stitched on the outside and on the inside here and you can see that um, it's double folded over there. There are no garter tabs in this corset and you can also see that um, in the front there is a top stitch right there. And you just opened up the laces so that you can see how the modesty panel is finished in the same fashion fabric and I think it's really cute that uh, it just features like the shoe flying off of her foot there. Um, so Julianne says that the interfacing that she used for the modesty panel is uh, the type that's generally used to stiffen hats so I'm guessing it's a type of buckram. Um, and then on the inside it's finished in the same uh, sort of cotton that the liner is made out of. And then on the inside here you can see that it is suspended on the laces with these grommets here so if you don't like the modesty panel you can absolutely remove it. And also there is a one inch wide modesty panel on the knob side of the busk here finished in the same fashion fabric and it's just stiffened with interfacing. The busk in this corset is 10 inches long and it's a standard flexible busk half an inch wide on each side. It has five loops and pins and they are all equidistantly spaced. As well there is a quarter inch wide flat steel bone on either side of the busk for further reinforcement. Since I requested double steel boning in my corset there are a total of 28 bones, 14 on each side not including the busk here. So uh, double boned on the seams there are um, a pairs of quarter inch wide spiral steel bones except for right there by uh, really close to the back panel there with the grommets. Uh, reinforcing the busk here is another quarter inch wide flat steel bone and also two more quarter inch wide flat bones by the grommets there. There are a total of 26 two-part size double zero grommets in this corset, so 13 on each side. They're set equidistantly and they are finished in silver with a medium flange around them. I see no damage to the grommets at all, no fraying around the, the fabric. And moving the modesty panel aside so you can see the back of these grommets, they have a nice big washer. Um, I don't see any splits in these, most of them have rolled really beautifully. There are a couple of places where it's a little bit more difficult to lace up the corset, but I think that that is more a property of the way that the modesty panel is actually just suspended on the corset because I find even in my own corsets that are suspended with grommets um, it tends to cause a little bit more friction with the laces but I don't see any places where the laces are actually catching on the laces or on the grommets themselves. Uh, the laces in general they are uh, seems to be quarter inch wide nylon flat black braided lacing. They are very very strong. I, I would say it's pretty much impossible for them to break. Um, they don't seem to have very much stretch in them. They hold the bows very well. Um, for the most part they glide through the grommets so I have no problem with these. The standard size plain Alyssum underbust starts at $200 in Roger Foley's Etsy store and if you would like some of the special features that I showed in this video such as the custom fabric, the double boning and the modesty panel, these are available for a markup. So this concludes my review of the standard size Alyssum underbust corset made by Roger Foley. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you did then please remember to click that like button as it helps support the channel. If you have any comments or questions about this corset or Roger Foley in general, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I will see you all for the next video. Bye!